My name is Bob Wilbanks with Ambassadors for Business, and I'm really excited to be interviewing Ron Henderson today, uh, mainly because I've got a background in this very business that he's looking to uh, permeate with this self-staging concept. Uh, he's got a keynote that I think will change people's lives in the way that they uh, view themselves uh, when they're going to have interactions with others. My background includes over three years with HomestoreAndRealtor.com, uh, several years in the real estate industry where I represented uh, four different builders. At, at one point, I, I had over 100 listings out there uh, on the MLS. Uh, and I know the importance of staging those homes, but I never really thought about self-staging. And that's something that, that Ron brings to the marketplace. Ron, tell us about your signature keynote, self-staging. Well, I developed this program several months ago, Bob, and it's actually called self-staging. And when I say that, people kind of give me that look, because when you think of staging, generally speaking, Bob, you think of staging a home and why people stage homes and the reasons behind that. And if you look at people that are actually, that know how to stage a home well, you'll find that that home will generally sell anywhere from 30 to 40 days from the minute they've actually staged it. But what's so important about the staging is because when people walk into a home, if it's not staged, they see your clutter, they see your mess, and they can't really, Bob, envision themselves in it. So people will stage a home because they want to make that good, you know, they say presentation, all right? And then they also will stage the outside of their home for curb appeal. Now think about this. You're looking for a property and you pull up, what's the first thing you look at? You say, oh, this looks really nice. The yard looks great all those things, but here's the deal. And this is really geared for people in real estate or people in business. But for the segment of this show, I really want to talk really about people in the real estate business. So you want to sell a home and you've staged the home and everything else, but you haven't done any self-staging. So self-staging is looking at your physical self, everything, mental, your physical self, the same way you look at your home. Because the key, Bob, is most of the cells that I'm talking about begins way before that prospective client, okay, even meets you face to face. So I think that gives me a little bit of background on the inspiration behind this. Uh, but if we dig a little deeper into that, Ron, uh, where was there something that triggered uh, you going to this uh, extent, especially with regard to? you know, real estate self-staging. Right. Well, Bob, I have a lot of friends in the real estate business and the ones that do really well, unknowingly kind of implement some of the things that I'm talking about. So let me break it down. So when I go and I, let's say if I'm doing a keynote somewhere, I talk about the different elements of self-staging. And the first thing I talk about is what I call basically taking care of your physical self. And the reason I say that is because the world we live in, you constantly hear this, don't judge a book by its cover. But the reality is every single day we're judged on that cover. So here's an example. You're looking to hire, an, hire a new employee and the person walks in and they're 500 pounds overweight. In your mind, the first thing you're thinking is, if I hire this person, are they gonna have a heart attack? Now, you can't discriminate against them out, out in the open, but in your mind, you're gonna say, you know what, I don't really know, can they actually do the work because you're judging the book by the cover. So first part element of self-staging, Bob, is for each and every person, get yourself in the best physical shape that you can and stay that way. Now the reasons for it is this, you're gonna have more energy, especially if you're, in a, in, you're, you're, doing, you're trying to sell homes and listing homes, you're out, you can be out all day, all night. So you need the energy to do that. And you need energy not just in the morning, but you need energy in the afternoon and then at night because a lot of your clients are at night. So you want to be in the best physical shape that you can. And the other reason, Bob, is this. If you're not in great shape, most of the time you're going to find yourself being more prone for illness and all these other things. And if you're sick or if you're in pain, like right now, I have a foot problem from a shoe that I wore and it's a little irritating. But because I do have a strong mind, because it's only at the bottom of my foot, I can actually deal with it. But those things can be a major distractor when you're talking to somebody about business because your mind is really focused on your pain or it's focused, Bob, on your lack of energy. So that's one of the first steps or one of the first keys that I use when I talk about self-staging is number one, you wanna be in the best 
shape that you can possibly be in so that you have the energy to really meet and greet people and not be thinking about yourself. So that's step number one. Uh, as you go through this process, and now you've, you've taken care of that exterior and that body, uh, I think you naturally start to exude a, a positive attitude to others. Uh, is that something that kind of goes into step two, being more cognizant about that? Well, I think people, when you feel better, you generally kind of, you emanate these things, but step two, step two, when I talk about that, I say, you want to have a positive attitude at all times. Now I say all times, now people will hear that and they'll say, well, is that hard to do? And I'll pause and I'll say, Bob, well, it depends on you. Because if you say, I think it's hard to do, it's going to be hard to do. Having a positive attitude is understanding that things happen for a reason. You can't get caught up in it. So here's an example. You've spent a month working with somebody and they all of a sudden decide to list with another real estate agent. Okay? And you're on the phone with this person. You're thinking, I can't believe it. I can't believe all the hours that I spent. You did this to me. You hang up the phone, Bob, and all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, phone rang. Hello? It's so-and-so real estate. Uh, sir, I want to talk to you about, uh, I'm looking to possibly uh, buy a home. Can you help me? Yeah, what do you need? Now, you don't realize it, but what happens is you took all that negative energy. So having a positive attitude really is understanding that you have to maintain this at all times. And there's a way to do it and be genuine with it. And this is how you do it. Understand. Things happen for a reason. Don't take things personal. Care more about that individual than you do about your pocketbook. Like you hear these commercials, what's in your wallet, I say, not about what's in your pocket. It's really about what's in your heart. And so what you do is you maintain a positive attitude, understanding that things happen for, the, for a reason. And if that person didn't sign with you, guess what? They weren't supposed to sign with you, Bob. They weren't supposed to. And you should wish that person well. But here's the, here's the thing. It takes practice to do that. But the more you do it, the better you get at it. Because you want to be really genuine with this. So people meet you and they say, I can't believe how positive the guy is. He never, I haven't had a bad day now. It's going on, I don't know, 38 years. Sure. And people don't believe me. But the reason I haven't had a bad day is I've implemented some of the things that I talk about in self-staging into my life. Sure. Okay. It's kind of that mindset that oh, yeah. really comes along mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. that positive attitude. Yes. Uh, that uh, you know, hey, yeah, things might not be going my way today, but there's right. always another day, and there's oh, yeah. the next moment that's coming up, and then we're going to be fine. So uh, you, you talk about step number three. So you've got uh, you, you've got your exterior working well. Uh, you're working on this positive mindset mm -hmm. and and uh, 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 making sure that you're keeping that sale. Uh, uh, going in that right direction. Now uh, you've got uh, the step number three. What's next? Okay. Let me go to step number three, but I'm gonna I'm gonna actually add in number two with it. See that positive mindset though, that goes into every single thing that you do. So when you meet that person, you are so positive they can't even believe it. Now here's an example. You ever went and purchased a car, and you have that salesman that's trying to just sell you sell you. And then you say, you know what, uh, I think we're going to think about it. And all of a sudden you can tell that his attitude kind of changes a little bit. He's really not interested in you. But another salesman comes up and he says, hey, uh, can I help you? You go, well, a guy already helped me. And, and then he stands there a little bit and he's just standing there as you're looking at cars. And he says, uh, my name is so-and-so. What is your name? You say, my name is Bob Wilbanks. And he says, Bob, let me just share something with you. One of the biggest decisions you'll make in your life financially other than buying a home is buying a car. This is really good that you're taking the time to really look at this car. Let me give you a car. If you decide that you're gonna buy this car, do so. But really, take make sure that this is the right car for you, Bob, because it's a big step. Now, who would you rather buy from? A guy like that? Absolutely, or you know, especially if they uh, take an interest in you personally. Sure. You know, I love that saying uh, where, you know, People don't care how much you know right. until they know how much how you much care. You care. Exactly. So it, it really comes down to asking those questions uh, to, to really unlock in that person, what are they really looking for? Right, right, uh, right. Versus you might have an impression oh, yeah. right, of, of what it might be, but if you bring that positive attitude, right. 
uh, and then uh, ask the right questions of those people as you meet them, uh, and we'll draw them. I agree. Forth. I agree. And, and see, you hear all the time, you hear people say attitude, and people talk about this stuff, but here's the thing. People don't know how powerful it is. If they knew more about it, they would be doing better in business. The only reason that I've been self-employed as a, even as a speaker and as a, as a coach for the last 40 years is because I've had a positive attitude. Mm -hmm. I was the first personal trainer in this five state area. How did I, how have I stayed around this long, Bob? It's my attitude. I value the client more than I value what I'm making or what I'm putting in my pocketbook. Right. Okay. Step number three, Bob, is what I call the catch and release program. Think about it. Catch and release. Maybe, let's use an analogy, a person is fishing somewhere and you're out there fishing for an hour and you catch that marlin or you catch that salmon, but because they have a certain limit, you have to release it after you catch it. So you catch it and you look at, oh my God, you take a picture of it, you're holding that big picture of the fish. Right. <sighs> But you got to release it. So you look at that moment, but then you got to release it. Catch and release is looking at all those things that happen that come your way that you don't like. You recognize it for what it is. You say, you know what? Uh, I don't like the fact that, yes, I spent a month with this guy. Now he's listing with somebody else. You recognize it. Take a deep breath. Literally. Do it right now, Bob. And, release. and you hear this all the time. And you let it go. And here's the thing. The more you do that, the easier it gets. I do that every single day of my life. Catch and release. I don't let those things affect me. You recognize it for what it is. Yes, you would love that sell, but there's a reason that the guy didn't connect with you. Right. There's a reason that he didn't purchase from you. He needs to be with somebody else. Let him, let him go. Don't get hung up in that stuff. Catch it and release it. Release it. You can even visually uh, uh, think about uh, those sales that maybe didn't go real well for right, yourself right, right. and say, yeah, I probably would have been another one of those. Make it a little easier right, right. Uh, to do the release as well. Right. So uh, it's always hard uh, in the real estate side because every single transaction mm -hmm. can, can really make or break your month or your quarter. So that's a hard practice to get through. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely, I, I, I completely mm -hmm. uh, understand that one. Uh, uh, so from being from being in, I was in that that business. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. so, so you can relate to it. And see, <laughs> I relate to it. And then yeah. see also too, Bob, and dealing with that people that especially real estate agents, they're con or realtors, they're constantly dealing with either rejection, stress, their highs and lows. They can have four or five great months, and all of a sudden they're down. Right. And so you'll they'll let that negativity creep in. You have to be positive. I'm going to give you a really good example. I went to the doctor and I was told that I had a PSA score. It's for prostate. And I was told that my uh, PSA was higher than what, way higher than what it's supposed to be. I took a second, literally. I kind of felt inside, I took a deep breath. I let it go. Because here's what happens. If I dwell on the fact that that is high, it might be cancerous or something like that, that will have more of an effect than what's actually going on in my body. Well, that will drag me down and I want to stay up at, at all times. So now I'm waiting to have an MRI and see what happens, but I believe that things happen for a reason. So yes. I stay positive with that. Stay positive, whatever the, whatever's coming down the pipe, if you're positive about it, you're gonna get the most out of every right. situation. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right? Yep. Uh, so uh, you've got your catch and release, now you get into step number four, uh, which is really about uh, client care. Oh yeah, client care. It's, this is one that seems simple, but if it was, more people would be doing better in their businesses, in their individual businesses. Again, 40 years in business, it's because I truly care about my clients. I love my clients. My clients are more important than my pocketbook. And guess what? Sometimes, Bob, my, my pocketbook could suffer a little bit, but ultimately, ultimately if you want to be have something that makes you kind of differentiate yourself from other agents, you have to show that you care about people and you really want to be genuine about it. And I, and I don't care where I'm speaking at, and I tell people this. If you can't, if you don't really care enough about the people in your profession or your career, get a new career. Mm. Get something that you can be passionate about so that you can go in there every day so that it's not about the money. It's not about how much money that you put into your pocket. It's about that client. It's about meeting their needs and really showing 100% that 
that you care about them. And when you do that, it's going to come back to you because you're thinking long term. You're sure. not thinking short term. Yeah, you, it, it, it's almost like going all the way back to the beginning on your mindset side of things. If you yes. focus just on, uh, boy, I can't do this or I can't do that because right. it's right. bad, yep. versus yep. going back to your actual core and getting that true right. mindset exactly. right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, exactly. You know, if, if you're treating people right, the money comes. Exactly. If you're after the money, it's hard sometimes. To, to show that you're treating people right. Right, right. So, I agree. I agree. Uh, and they feel that. It's all about the money with, with him, right? Oh, yeah. So, so Ron, uh, you know, when you're, when you're in uh, these various settings that you run into, uh, I mean, you're out and about all over the place. It's not just about real estate and realtors, which, right. you know, I know that's one of your primary sure. focus or targets sure. uh, with this new uh, uh, self-staging concept sure. that right. you're, you're delivering. It's my signature uh, this, keynote, actually, Bob. It's my signature keynote. Yeah, yeah. So, so fantastic. So, but you work also in like a, a variety of other environments. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, I do a lot of stuff. You know, I'm an author. I'm a personal trainer, too. I coach people. I do some individual things for people as well. I obviously I do volunteer, but here again, let's bring it bring it around full circle. It's everything about you and how you deal with it. How you deal with it. If all of a sudden you, you go to a restaurant and something doesn't happen the way you want it. Honestly, in your mind you have to go there and just say, It's not about you. It isn't about you. And we hear, I mean, there's so many people out there, there's so many motivational speakers that are out there, and people say things all the time. So what I tell people, even when I'm speaking to people, the reason I don't want to speak any more than maybe twice a month is because my heart is into this, because I care about those people that I'm speaking to, and so it takes so much out of me. It literally drains me because I care about people. Because when I meet somebody and I say, how's your day going? They go, well, it's going all right. And they ask me how my day is going. I said, it's going great. Whether I have two bucks in my pocket or whether I have $1,200 in my pocket. Whether I have, I get people, are, they're throwing cards at me. I don't want a platinum card. I'm not paying $500 for a platinum card because I don't travel enough. It's not worth it. Right. But my, my love on where I'm at mentally and physically pretty much stays at an all-time high because I've worked at it. And if you think something is hard for you to do, guess what? It is going to be hard. Everything that I'm talking about, if a person starts tomorrow, they're going to see that their life is changing because they're not going to be getting hung up on all those little things, Bob. You know, one of the things I'm seeing here is, you know, it's it's knowing yourself mm -hmm. so that you can lead yourself, yes. which then allows people to uh, have that influence with the others that are around them, be positive to others. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if, if you're solely doing it for self, that begins to show, oh, yeah. you, you know, if you, but if you do it because of being a better influence uh, on others oh, yeah. to help others get to where they really want to be, oh, yeah. doesn't that uh, really uh, have the better or greater impact from a long-term perspective? Sure. Oh, yeah. uh, and it's sustainable oh, yeah. because I, I believe we as human beings, we get energy from that when we're helping someone else. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. of course. Oh. Of course, of course. And you know, when I look back, at the, let's say, 39, 40 years, I have trained multi-millionaires for years. And I have, some of those clients have been with me for over 20 years. Now, why are they with me for 20 years? Because the things that I produce in them, because I'm a great coach, not to brag, but I'm only good at what I do because I've implemented the things that I'm talking about. And you care about that. And I care about them. Right. And that's why I said that's and why know step that. number three is so, so important. So important. But if you come into work, like people, will, they'll, they'll, they'll come in here and they'll talk to me and they'll say, well, I didn't want to come in today uh, because I was worried that, you know, I, I'm sick and maybe I'll get sick. I go, I don't receive that. I don't get sick, but thank you. I said, as long as you feel good enough, you come in here. I have an attitude about not getting sick. It's just positive. I refuse to get sick. I refuse. And I say, you know what? As a person of faith, as long as it works, I'm going with it. Sure. Because I've been doing it for years. I got a revelation. I'm not supposed to get sick. So I, I walk in that revelation. Yeah, you get, everybody gets tired. Everybody has yeah. things happen to them. That's everybody can start to feel like there's something coming on. But that mindset, again, right. uh, uh, can, can definitely shorten any of those periods where you're feeling a little yeah. low or a little down. Yeah. Uh, and no one else really needs to know it. Right. 
Yeah, I learned I learned some of that from my wife. She mm -hmm. she, she gave me a real hard time when we first got married. You know, you know, no. when you get sick, you just act. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, just just walk it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, work your way through it. Let me kind of tag in with what you just said, Bob. Even when it comes to people, when somebody says that they're sick or whatever, I remember about a month ago, I was coaching somebody, and they said, "Oh, you sound like you're sick," because they could barely hear me talk. And I said, no, I said, the, the heat was too high in my house. It created kind of an irritation. And I said, I'm going to gargle with salt water after you. I said, it will be fine. He says, well, why warm on a bike when I just gargle with salt water now? So I went in and gargled with salt water. And he was worried about me being sick. I said, I'm sorry, I don't get sick. So anyways, he trains for an hour. So by the time he got ready to leave, I said, I said, haven't you noticed that my voice is totally back to normal? <laughs> it looks at me and smiles. I said, I told you. But, but anyway, so I noticed that uh, 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 my mouth, and I could feel it, and I, there's a little irritation in my throat. I took hot salt water, and I gargled, and I already knew that that was going to take care of any irritation whatsoever. I was totally fine. Okay. See, but you got to listen to your body, and I do keep a positive attitude with everything. Yeah, well, the body's amazing. It heals itself, oh, yeah. for sure. So this new training program that you developed, where is it delivered? I mean, is this something that you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, groups, large groups, big auditoriums? What's well, basically, this is really geared for uh, conferences. Uh, and if, a, if an employer uh, wants to bring them in, obviously, uh, and I can do it as small as 30, but it's really just to to hit the masses of people. So if you have a company or association like Realtors and those uh, organizations like that that really want to have make an impact and have their employees do better because here's what happens. When you have all those things in play, you are going to do better in sales. Again, I'm going to go back to myself. The first trainer in the five state area. Why am I still in business? Because I incorporate self-staging. In other words, I look the part, not because I have an ego, but I understand the importance of looking good, but also I feel good because I exercise, I'm consistent with exercising, I try to eat right, and all the things that I talked about in the beginning about having a positive attitude with everything that I'm doing. I tell my wife this, give me a tea or something like that or a mocha when I treat myself in a book, I'm good to go. I don't need vacations, I just, because I'm happy. Sure. Yes. Right. Picking yourself up and going somewhere else, you're just making that place happier. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I love being a blessing. I meet people all the time in the coffee shops. You hear people say, pay it forward, Bob. And I'll see a lady in front of the line, and I'll say, uh, what are you getting? She'll kind of look at me. I said, well, I got it. Well, I'm with my husband. I said, I got that, too. She said, why? I said, I want to bless you. And it has nothing to do about the pay, your, pay it forward deal. I like being a blessing. And people will think, well, you must have a lot of money. And I said, I could have two bucks in my pocket. I would still do that. Be exactly as happy as you are now. Oh yeah, because okay. you're happy. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, yeah. I mean that's so, amazing. Yeah. Him plus or him minus, right, is, right. it's still he's, yep. he's infinite. Yep. So exactly, uh, it, it's a great mindset to have, and it, it helps us uh, keep uh, keep that course, you Good. know, and, and set that sail right.